two or three weeks ago I made a liner puller for a track that he's lending. The lad I made it for sent me a link to a YouTuber called Lance. His YouTube channel is called Bundy Bear Shed. Um, he gave me a mention on there about the liner puller and he actually shows a one in use. Um, I did sit and watch his video. He does a video called Kangaroo Stew once a week where he just talks about shop life in general. Uh, certainly worth a look. Give him a little bit of support. Bundy Bear Shed. This is a seat belt mountain off a kit car that a friend of mine's building. And what I've got to do is make some longer ones. Now I'm looking at the design of this. It's basically 716 C1F thread in there. That's the standard seat belt thread. But what worries me is that shoulder there is a sharp 90 degree shoulder. Uh, I'd like to see a fillet on there so it's got a bit more strength. I mean, you only need a seat belt once. It's only going to do its job once and you don't want anything to fail. I've got six of these to do. So what I've done is, my friend of mine, Scott, has made the blanks on a CNC machine. He's obviously started with a round bar. And what I've done, I've just asked the machine two flats on. That's the thickness there. But it's a lot stronger. There's a lot more metal in here. And he's also put a fillet in there, which gives it a lot more strength. These are also made out of EN16 steel, which is really good quality, tough material. And that is going to be a lot stronger than the original item. I've got some dimensions, I've got a mark out and drill and tap, a 716th, you won't have hole in there. If it was only one or two, I would have made them myself, but I don't want to start doing six at a time. So that's the, the plan, mark out and drill them on the milling machine and put the 716th, you won't have thread in. That's the sort of thing you want on the end, but once again that's still a sharp sharp shoulder in there which I don't like. Because I've got quite a few of these to do I'm only going to set one up and then each one will go into this collet block and be repeatable so they'll all end up with the holes in the same place. Well that's a theory of it. Definitely time to cast a new, a new end on my lead hammer. Certainly seen better days. Maybe we need to put a 10mm collet in here. <coughs> because there's a radius on there, I'm just going to put that nut on, which takes up the radius and sits nice and square on that shoulder. And it means that every one I put in there will be in exactly the same the same depth. I need to make sure that that's lying parallel and then we can set it up, drill one and carry on and get all six done. <coughs> There's a few ways of making that parallel. You could put a clock gauge on it, you could eyeball it. You put a piece of round bar in there and just touch it on. That's probably the, the way I'm going to do it. I've opened the chuck fully up and obviously the end of the chuck is flat so if I simply put that on there like that and I can move that and obviously I can find out that's now lying dead flat, dead parallel so I can tighten up the collet it's all the way home right so that means I can put everyone in and they'll all be in exactly the same place The first thing we need to do is find the centre. I've brought the DRO screen out so you can hopefully see that as well. So if we start things up. Bring this wig like the wards were or away from were. So it touches it and then it stops moving and then it will kick off. So then we zero the y-axis. Simply come round to the other side. Exactly the same thing again. It stops moving, kicks off, 
then we need to half the y axis so you press y then half and that gives a reading there so we bring this back to zero on the y axis scale there that's zero lock it off we now know that that is dead on the center of that piece well it's actually a hundred of a mil away but it's certainly near enough for what we're doing Next we need to find the end of the bar. I'm sure that's 10 mil. I'll measure this again just to make sure. It is 10 mil. Half of 10 mil is five. So once again we'll bring this down into the touches. Stops moving, kicks off, and then we need to go. 5 mil this way which is there so that now is right on the very end of there we can't check it That is absolutely perfectly on the end of there. So that's the end. I need to work out how far that is in. I measured I'm going to draw up just 12 mil. It's 10 mil from the end, so I simply wind that in. 10 mil, which is there. I can lock off that axis now. Turn the top of the hole. Put the parts in, just do each one in turn. Right, so that's X and Y axis locked off. Something like that now, put a centre drill in, tap and drill, and tap them. This is AN16, which is decent material. And the 716 tap I've got is not really good. So we'll just have to persevere and do our best with it. Right, so everything's locked off so I can centre drill it. Nine point nine is the top and drill for seven sixteen C so one F, so I'll have to see if I can find a drill that's somewhere near that. Bound to be an imperial, an imperial drill. See how that chuck's running out, but the drill's running through. It's just a cheap Chinese truck, but it, it does the job. That's one of those paint brushes I bought. I bought a set of them, I think it was four quid for a set of 20, that ideal for putting cutting paste on. Right, I've got a 9.8 drill here. I don't know where that come from, but that should certainly do the job.
certainly a sharp 9.8 drill mill drill This is my 716 CONF top, so I'm not sure how good it is, it's the only one I've got. Right, plenty of cut and pierced on here. Maybe I'll have to change the, I'll have to change the belt on the mill to get a bit more. I want to make sure that the top's sorted straight basically. It's not a particularly unlawfully sharp top, but it certainly appears to be doing the job. It hasn't got a little dimple in the end. Normally tops have a little dimple in the end so you can put a centre in. This one hasn't. It's not the best top in the world. And the whole is slightly under size. But that means it is going to be a nice, a nice tight thread. It doesn't like it at all. I may have a better top at work. I think what I'll do is I'll get a better top. That certainly started so I can take it out of there and prep all the other ones the same and then take it to work and put a, a nice new top through there. But well, it's, it's put quite a decent thread in, nice sharp thread. Right, so now we can simply take that part out. And we'll use that to, to line it up with. Wind the drill all the way back, so we're using the drill body, not the jaws of the chuck. And that's laying itself up quite nicely. Make sure it's all the way in. Tighten up the collar chuck. Right, then we're ready to start a little bit of production work. Certainly starting the top straight, which is basically all I'm after. It's 
so the whole slate on that side and the tap's blunt but it will it will put the threads in look at that bastard thing I've actually managed to find a brand new 716 CONF tap that I had put away for a rainy day so to speak and that is cutting through there no problem at all couple of half turns forward and one half, half turn backwards away I was showing the top wheels once again it will fear for hand drill just to take and nasty little rags off I mean, I pick this up, I got a tear in my eye. Anyway. Once again, it's just time to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. I'm getting sort of near to 100,000 views, and it'll be nice to get there. Anyway, thanks for watching.